anything in my know how to do, but you are infinite. You are infinite knowledge. So start bringing that to me. Um, And that started me on my path for alternative healing. So then I started uh, taking classes and certifications in naturopathic health and wellness. Um, I looked into, again, um, alternative healing methods like Reiki. So Mm -hmm. I became a a Reiki master, a crystal therapist. Um, You can go on and on and on. But essentially what those things would do was allow me to treat my patients holistically. So the things that I wasn't able to do with just their their mental, I was able to work on spiritual things. I also was able to work on physical aspects for them. Not only was that helping them, it was helping me. So it was helping me with my own personal journey. It was allowing me to actually go deeper within myself. And so the deeper I was able to go within myself and heal myself, I was noticing that I was able to share that knowledge with all of my patients and I started seeing a change in them. And actually they started healing. Again, I keep putting the emphasis on healing, not just treating or putting a bandaid, actually getting better to the point where they didn't need to come back and see me. And that's what you want. You want people to get to a point of, of healing or wholeness so that they don't need to keep being dependent upon, you know, a system, so to speak. Um, well, so if, you, well, if you're, ju- if you're just it. joining us, uh, you're listening to Dr. Keisha Holly Johnson. I am Jason Medlock. Uh, this is Tereska Harrison. You're listening to I'm Woke. Uh, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, uh, Dr. Johnson, but can you tell us this in the beginning, you, you went to uh, medical school. What inspired you? Who inspired you to, to take that path? Oh, that's a great question. So my father actually inspired me. He got into a very bad accident um, when I was about 12 or 13 years old. And um, he had to have surgery on his neck. And um, during that time, he did some what we call cognitive rehabilitation therapy. Mm -hmm. And he was doing that with a psychologist. And I used to go to uh, the sessions with him. And I was fascinated by uh, what this psychologist, and actually he was a neuropsychologist, was able to do with my dad as far as just his memory and functioning and things like that. And so I actually got interested in neuropsychology, and that's actually what I have my PhD in, in clinical neuropsychology. And uh, I had to go to medical school in order to complete that. So what neuropsychology is, is basically the study of brain functioning and how that basically manifests in our behaviors. Okay. And we already got, we already have the, the, the guests that's starting to crank it up early. Uh, Ozzy, Ozzy, uh, Clayton, Miss Clayton says, wow, this is right up my alley. I'm grateful for you and what you're doing, Dr. Johnson, healing over being medicated. What, what, how do you respond yeah. to that? Yeah. That, you know what, that, that is exactly what I feel part of my purpose is. <laughs> Um, and I'll say that, and I, you know, what I'm about to say probably is not going to go over with some people, but I think the westernized way of doing, uh, treatment yes. is again about just putting a, a bandaid on things. And that's yes. usually by, um, you know, putting people on a bunch of medication yeah. and yes, it, it works. It, it, it's able to have people maintain, but they're actually not getting better. They're just maintaining. And so that's why I said it's just basically been my mission to find ways to heal. Okay. And so that means, again, looking at the person holistically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically, and treating all of those things. Because any physical manifestation has something to do with a spiritual or emotional problem. And as, yeah, as we as we dig, and trust, I don't want to interrupt you, but when you when you when you when you unpack that. Any illness has to do with a spiritual and or emotional problem, mm-hmm. but in which past life. And see, I don't know <laughs> if I should go there, <laughs> but you go on there too. Early. I, I'm gonna go there too early. Yeah. I, I want to go there yeah. too early. But uh, Teresa, uh, can you go ahead? I was, I, <laughs> I was you know, because I, I really I was I wanted to go back, and you know, uh-huh. for me, when 
I was young, I kind of knew that there was connection. I had some kind of connection with something outside. I just always knew that there was some type of of pulling in my spirit to a grounding thing. So when did you, and which kind of made me see that I was kind of woke. So tell me, when did you experience your woke period, your woke time? Wokeness. <laughs> woke guys are really when getting here. Let's see. Yes. <laughs> well, I would have to say... Um, it was probably around that same time when I was um, realizing that my patients weren't getting better. Mm. You know, they weren't getting better to to a certain extent. And and that whole feeling of there's more for me to do, meaning that there's more to me. OK, mm-hmm. there's more for me to do. There's more to me. There's more depth to me. Um, yes. And so that probably occurred around 2014, 2015 for me. So this is relatively recent, if you want to think about it in terms of Mm -hmm. years. Um, Mm -hmm. But what I realized is I could only take my patience so far because I was only so far. Mm -hmm. I had to, again, do a deeper journey into myself in order to take people along with me. Okay, and it's it's interesting how we can we do that. It's almost at, at a point of when we hit a brick wall. When we hit a wall, is when we kind of yes. look inside, go within. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and you hit you hit a key phrase there, going within, because you realize that those external things are no longer bringing satisfaction to you. Or you might have everything in the world. I mean, I have a great life. I had a great life, but I still was like. I'm not that happy. There's got to be something else. There's something more. Because again, knowing that there's more to me, that actually I'm very, very expansive. And if I'm if I'm expansive, that means I have access to this infinite knowledge, this infinite being. What else can I do to bring this back into this realm and help people and show people, you know, the way? <laughs> you know, Dr. Wow. Johnson, we touched when we were in when we were in the when we were in the back room, we touched a little bit on food. And mm-hmm. I, I, can you talk a little bit about or do you incorporate um, the practice of what types of high vibratory food with with the holistic health? Can, can you just kind of expand on food and how that whole thing plays a process? Absolutely. So, again, like I was saying before, any type of physical issue or, or um, problem is first of all, related to something emotional and spiritual. But if we want to attack it from just the physical standpoint, the first thing that you want to do is look at diet and exercise. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so with diet, uh, we're all eating and I'm guilty of it too, still guilty of it, eating a lot of processed food, eating a lot of sugars, you know, all of these things. And these are all toxins that are going into our body. Okay. Alcohol, all of that. And so you're going to have a lot of physical issues as a result of putting all these processed foods into you. So in order to correct for that problem, first you need to detox. Mm -hmm. You need to get rid of all of that stuff that's in there. And so I always recommend people to detox for at least seven to 14 days. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Usually you want to be able to Uh, flush the major organs. So the kidneys and the liver, you want to get that out. You also want to cleanse the blood. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. I won't spend time talking about that. Um, But you want to detox and then you want to start to eat more raw foods or live foods, fruits and vegetables, because again, um, things that are not cooked, because the things that are not cooked are those, again, what you say, high vibratory foods. They have life in them. Yes. Yes. Li- yes. They literally are life. Yes. And so if yes. you're ingesting that, then you're ingesting life. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we're ingesting life. <laughs> and I think that's, that's and it has, and that really connects with the mental uh, as well, because food can not only heal your physical, you know, but the mental, the brain, the mental issues that people may have, it can actually heal that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Johnson, uh, and, and to get a little deeper, uh, since we're on the, the topic of the food, uh, epigenetic transfer, um, 
you know, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to hold a gunslinger in, but the, 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 the you can't. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jason. But just explain that. Explain the meaning of definition of what you. Well, just said. I mean, the epigenetic transfer. That's the the you know the cells, the, the 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 slaughter of animals. Uh, the animals have uh, they're traumatized, and this meat mm-hmm. is packaged. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it is uh, then sold, but sales always keep the memory, and we consume this this horror, this trauma, and we wonder why we have all this chaos going on in the world today. And and those memories, those uh, you you can attribute that even to slavery, uh, the way that uh, humans, you know, African Americans mm-hmm. in particular, were treated. Those mm-hmm. genes, those cells were transferred. Um, you know, all the way down uh, the the you know the our uh, ancestry and our, our heritage. So there is a way to get rid of it. I mean, you know, you have to do a number a number of affirmations. Uh, you can um, uh, reverse your RNA, but you have to do repetitive things and, and speak repetitive uh, positive affirmations of change, and eventually you can sort of break that. But epigenetic, epigenetic uh, transfer is not just me uh, 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 just saying something. This is scientifically proven. Tell them, Doc. <laughs> Absolutely. And the, just kind of I wanted to piggyback off something you said about the the changing by different uh, affirmations and things that you say. Mm-hmm. What you're doing is you're actually programming your subconscious mind yes. when you're doing that. OK, mm-hmm. and you're, and it's always best to actually do that even early in the morning, like between the hours of four and six a.m. or right before you go to bed at night, because when you are asleep and you're dreaming, that's when your subconscious is the most active. Mm-hmm. So if you're wanting to get the most bang for your buck, play some meditation music and have some positive affirmations and things playing in the background, you will be programming your subconscious for these more positive things. Okay. Um, and so you were getting ready to say something. I, 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 no, 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 no. But, but, but <laughs> after that, I was going to say, let's talk more about Jacob's ladder also, and, you know, just, and, and so people can understand that, you know, you're in business and you, all of these things that we're starting to talk about, we're going to have a pretty nice show and plenty more information, but Jacob's ladder, uh, you actually provide a lot of services. Let's, let's let the audience know. Okay, so I'm, I'm again, a clinical psychologist, so I provide testing and assessment for any types of um, what we would call mental issues or disorders, personality concerns, behavior disorders. I also provide therapy, mental health therapy um, for these same types of concerns. But again, I'm a holistic practitioner, so I'm going to provide, again, our naturopathic services, which provides uh, an assessment uh, of your functioning on all these different levels, spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical. Um, I also do, like I said, the Reiki therapy. So uh, for those that don't know what Reiki is, it's an energy healing technique that we use. And what I have found in using it in conjunction with therapy, especially for people with trauma, uh, for people who can't really talk about their trauma, they don't need to. They could come in and get Reiki therapy where they're not having to talk and we can still work with them and heal them in that manner. You, uh, oh, no, go, go ahead. ahead. Go, go ahead. No, 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 no. You go. Okay. No, no. And then I keep going. Huh? And so <laughs> then I also provide in conjunction with the Reiki therapy, I do what we call crystal healing therapy. Yes, yes. So again, this is another way or alternative method of healing that we use to be able to help people with these array of, of issues. And they don't necessarily have to talk to me. Some people aren't, aren't, you know, keen on doing that. We can still help you and you don't have to do all that talking and, and bearing your soul if you don't want to. OK, we can still work with you. And then lastly, um, I am an Ak- certified Akashic record reader. Um, and so this is one way to be able to help people discover what their purpose is, what their destiny is, what are some particular blocks that they may have that's going to uh, hinder them from being able to reach this uh, destiny or purpose or being in alignment for that. So again, I'm I'm hitting you on all cylinders. I'm getting everything. For you. Uh, are you gonna go to us or am I gonna go? <laughs> well, could, could, could you just explain what a cosmic re- reader is or a cosmic records? Yes. 
So but you're a Akashic record reader, correct? Yes, I am an Akashic so record reader. Yeah. Okay, what is that? So let's let's think of. I try to use this analogy a lot. Think about being in a library, mm-hmm. okay? And you're in a library with a bunch of books on a bunch of shelves. Mm-hmm. Okay? The Akashic Records is essentially your soul's library. Yes. Okay. Over many, many, many incarnations. Okay. And then you want to also think about the librarian. Okay. You know, the librarian is the yes. one that goes and um, picks the books off the shelves for the things that you want about yes. your soul. Okay. Yes. And so all of us have what we call this Akashic library that keeps, that records every single memory, every single event, yeah. everything of your soul over every incarnation. And you have this librarian who we call our masters, teachers, and loved ones that can go in and yes. pick an event out for you for anything that you want to know. The purpose of, of the Akashic Records is to honestly help you get into whatever your soul's alignment is for this journey, for this life. Okay. Okay. And what a reader does, someone like myself, is I transmit that message to you. So I am the one that gets in touch with the masters, teachers and loved ones of your soul's library and then pass the messages on to you for what information you need in order to fulfill your destiny in this life. And that is quite amazing. It's quite amazing. (laughs) And and I'm going to pull some more out of Dr. Trusted. Don't worry. So (laughs) so the Akasic Records is also the vibration of your ancestors. Oh, and, absolutely. And, you know, um, you can reach the Acosta record in a number of ways. You can reach it uh, by astro traveling. You can reach it uh, by the methods uh, the, that uh, Dr. Johnson was speaking of. Uh, you can sort of maybe go into your heart space and then you can meditate and you can get there. Um, but they know who you are. Yeah, you know, when you get there, they know you. <laughs> and, but but you have to, you know, Dr. Johnson, I'm, I'm just saying, you have to make sure that you're asking the right questions. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and the other important thing about the records is that it's only going to take you a step or two ahead. Yes. Okay? Typically, it meets you where you are, and then it gives you things a step or two ahead. It's not going to ever uh, overwhelm you. OK, because mm-hmm. you may not be ready for everything, right. every yes. single, if you think about it, yes. every single event that's been recorded. OK, yeah. so no. most of us are not ready for that. No. OK, right. so again, it's going to meet you where you are and give you a step or two ahead in order to answer whatever question you may have. And again, everything is in the purpose for the purpose of uh, getting you in alignment, getting you in alignment. So we're, we're at so this is topic. This a, is this a form of channeling? Let me just say quick, really quick. Is that a form of channeling? You can, you can look at it that way. Yes. To get to that place. Mm-hmm. But uh, we okay. really look at it as a term of divination, you know, okay. a reading, a reading. But it, but okay. I'm the person that would be necessarily kind of channeling for you. Again, yes. that, that information from those uh, okay. keepers, as we like to say. So, <laughs> so uh, we have the inquisitive audience at home. They're saying Akasic Records. Okay, well, what 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 page do I go to? What um, what? Give me the address. <laughs> so, <laughs> so 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 Doc. <laughs> exactly. So 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 Doctor Johnson, how did you calm your mind? How did you begin to understand how to even get there? What did you have to do? Wow. So again, I think it's just following your soul's journey. Um, one thing I always say is I try to listen to spirit at all, at all times. Um, everything that I have done up until this point, my spirit has led me to it. Okay. Um, and whenever I had a question, just even about myself, spirits like go over here, do this, get in contact with this person, or they'll bring something or someone to me. Um, so to answer your question about the Akashic records, I wanted personally to raise my vibration. I said, I want to be on the highest frequency that I, that I can possibly be on. How can I go about doing that? And then I ran into someone who was a actual Akashic records teacher 
And she's black, by the way, so I was happy about that. <laughs> so that was somebody, you know, that looks like me. Sure. Um, and so, again, because I was seeking that, God brought it to me. Okay. Wow. And that, that was the question. I wanted, to, what do I need to do to be at my highest vibration? How, did, how, how can I accomplish that? And we, to your passion records. So, so we'll get back to that, but then this, wow. we're going to get right back to that, but I want to, because I want to break this down because the audience, okay, so you were asking God, uh, how can I raise my vibration? And then this person showed up, but Tereska, all of the things that we've talked about in the last nine, eight episodes, and a lot of that was about the law of attraction. It's, it was about, you know, bringing things to you if you were intending on raising your vibration. Talk to me, Tereska. Yeah. Well, exactly, because we are we know that the key is high vibrations because we are energy. We're made of energy and light and, and we know and light. And when we know that we we know that we cause there's a cause and effect and we cause it all. So we draw things to us. A lot of attraction is good and bad. You know, mm-hmm. it can be those both levels. But the key is for us is to raise the vibration. So which is more the positive part of it you know that's where the abundance travels that's where abundance is and all that kind of thing and the lower vibration is where the poor poverty is <laughs> and if you think it it'll happen and I'm, i just want to rewind that for it so people can know yeah. that you know dr johnson was i mean and dr johnson is not the only professional who's been on this show speaking about their vibration speaking about connecting and these are very very highly intelligent people but they understand that spirituality is a huge part of who you are yeah well just let me just say that that's the hardest thing a person can do is that's because because everybody would be doing it but and even to those that are actually trying their best to do this it's hard to do it's hard to raise your vibrations um but she, it's good to know that there are foods different things you can eat different uh, there's a there's a natural health thing involved in all this, and then there's an, um, making up in your mind that you're going to be open to the spirit when you do connect. That you're going to be open to the change, you know, to what he, he's saying. You, your ears have to be open to it, you know. Everything has to be open. So that whole process is daunting for some people. When you say right, high vibrations, it, t- it tends to make people angry sometimes because it's hard for them to get there. So we so encourage. The- I like to know how do you how can you encourage somebody that has heard about uh, law of attraction and high vibration. How can you encourage them to make those first few steps to getting there? So, you know, I was just listening to you as you were talking about how some people get really frustrated and upset when they're trying to make this thing happen. And I'll tell you what I tell people all the time, give yourself some grace, Mm -hmm. give yourself permission, take your time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because time is an illusion anyway, if we really want to get deep about it. But, uh, right. you know, you just we give, get yourself, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you give yourself permission. You are right where you're supposed to be yes. at this particular time. Yes. And what will be, will be. Okay. Yes. Yes. And, and that frustration, that anger, that anxiety, those are those lower vib- vibratory feelings that actually are keeping you from the thing that you want. But when you take some time, calm your mind and and get to a level of acceptance. Yes. Then right where you are, where you are right where you're supposed to be. Then that's when those things that you're wanting actually will come to you. Because, again, they're up here. You're performing down here when you have those low low vibe feelings. Right. Right. But when you give yourself that grace and you give yourself that acceptance, you automatically raise to here right. where your yeah. blessings are, where that abundance is. Absolutely. And then it kind and then it overtakes you, just like they say how you know your cup overflows. Okay. Yes. When you get here, when you reach reach here, they're waiting. Yes. They're waiting for you and they overtake you. So that's the, uh, interesting because I, let me just say uh-huh. because I manifested some simple things. Because I was open and I actually noticed it a lot of times because we manifest naturally because that's what we we do we're being so manifest we do that but I actually noticed that that time particular few times that I manifest and I realized that I spoke a thing like the Bible tells us speak those things that are not as they were I wish mm-hmm. I had oh I wanted to have this but then I left it alone I thought nothing of it after that and I just moved on and then it just you know showed up and I was that's like right. wow and it and happens then I like backtrack to see how that happened and I said okay. So the thing is, is just like you said, 
you know, decide a thing, declare a thing, decree a thing, whatever, and then just let it go and move forward. Surrender. And, and believe and believing that it's gonna happen. It's surrendering is it. It's mm -hmm. just and then walking in grace and love and 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 knowing that everything is okay. It's okay yeah. where I am. Absolutely. So let, Absolutely. Let, let's uh, let's acknowledge uh, the, the the guest. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, not the guest, but the uh, the uh, audience. Uh, D says wonderful that she really loves this and. Uh, Mrs. Clayton says she loves it. Uh, uh, Carrie Fleming says absolutely amazing. Um, and, and here's Mrs. Clayton again. I feel like I'm ready for that experience. I'm in a flow. Um, yeah. And the synchronicities in my life have brought me to this moment for this purpose. It sounds like she's already getting there, Doc. It is yeah, she's already there. <laughs> she's already there. You know, she's already woke. <laughs> you know, but, but I, Doc, when, when we think about, and we're going to, no, we're going to stay on the classic record, but I want to talk about Reiki and how Reiki all of a sudden is this new thing to do. But the, the classic records, um, you know, you, 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 you raise your vibration. You, know, you were looking for, uh, uh, you know, a way to, um, express yourself more. And then you met a uh, classic record, uh, reader, a teacher who, who taught you how to do it. And now you understand what you're doing and you've been using these records for people who can you, can you kind of give us an example on, well, you know, I had th this patient or I had this cousin or I had, you know, my auntie and I went into the records and here's how I use them. Can you give us kind of a little quick rundown on how, how you use them once you're in there? So the, the typical person who is um, even interested in Akasha record reading are people who are seeking. Yes. They're seekers. Okay. Mm -hmm. and they are just, again, looking for their purpose. They're yeah. look, there might be some confusion about some things and they're seeking some clarity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so the typical questions that I will get will be like, well, what is my purpose? What is my destiny? Should I be with this particular person or not? Is this, uh, what are some blocks that I may have that's keeping me from whatever it is that I need to do? Okay. Um, and so those are kind of the typical questions, but if you notice uh, the, the basis is always somebody seeking something. Yes. They're seeking some type of answer that they haven't been able to kind of come up with on their own. So we go in, we, we uh, first we meditate, we get grounded. Okay. Um, I have to connect with the person. So we usually do some breathing, we'll do a breathing technique and mm -hmm. do that together so that we're centered together. I always, always, always have to ask for permission. I think that's very important yes. to mention. You cannot enter a person's records without their permission. So mm -hmm. I can't go in, and I can't go in there if they're not with me. OK, meaning just either virtually or in person. So I can't while they're asleep, say, oh, let me go in, in Susie Mae's records. That, that, that doesn't happen. Yes. That doesn't happen. Okay. They have to be present with you and they have to give you permission to do so. OK, and then um, they're kind of going to a meditative or trance like state. And I'm able to whatever questions they have, I will ask their what we call masters, teachers and loved ones. Mm -hmm. um, and we typically can't ask a lot of time related questions because, again, we're in the Akashic Records, which is in the etheric field. Time doesn't exist. It sure doesn't. It's only in the present. They're only going to be talking about the present. So we don't really ask a lot of time related questions. It's more about what does this person need to do? to get whatever it is that they, wherever they need to go or whatever answer it is that they're seeking. And remember, we only meet them where they're at and give them maybe a step or two or ahead. And then, okay. and then the hand for the audience is, you know, when, when, when you read your own records is really to, you know, look at what do, are you, what, what path should you be heading on based right. on previous lives, just to try to see if you're aligned and you don't, you're heading in the right direction. And I know that's maybe a lot to swallow for some folks, but that's really the the purpose. Uh, well, not the purpose, but that's really how you should use it unless you're working with a client. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we, we do have a, a purpose to feel here on earth because we're here for a purpose. And mm -hmm. I, I, after having one of my Reiki train classes, I did a um, session 
um, healing session, but uh, well, you you did purposes, galactic energy healing. I, okay, I did galactic. Yeah, energy, I get it. it's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyhow, one of our purposes is, is to um, bridge the gap between people, you know, unity and love, and kind of help bridge mm-hmm. that thing. And it's interesting with all the different ideas that I had business wise that actually can be used. I discovered to do that, do just such a thing. So I thought that was quite interesting. Um, but that's the reason why it's, it's important that we all know our purpose because we're here for a reason. And it's one of the things is not one of the things, maintain the earth and just help every each every person meet their goals, you know, for which they were here. You know, we're connected in that way and for that reason. Can- Absolutely. I often will tell people your purpose is number one to enhance humanity mm-hmm. that's that's your purpose that's everybody's purpose is to mm-hmm. enhance humanity but then you have a particular <clears throat> niche, a particular way in which you're supposed to do that okay right so you have to figure out what that particular niche is that you have but that you are servicing humanity or enhancing humanity while you do it absolutely for the greatest good of all I want to hear more about. I want to, if we can, crystal, crystal therapy, because that's another thing that I don't know well, well, a well, whole lot about. But, but what, what the question is before she gets into that, Reiki okay. is something like uh, buying the, these. Uh, remember how they the, the the females wear the the high jeans? You know, they come up the waist jeans. Okay, <laughs> so I'm trying to relate that because COVID nineteen hit, and, mm-hmm. and it's still here, but you know it's sort of subsided somewhat, and I don't want to. Uh, trivialize it but it's it's still with us but it's we're we're moving more with society but Mm -hmm. but there's a shift something has happened dr johnson and people are awakening uh people are the churches are still thriving but people are online more people are looking at alternative ways of getting information and, and trying to build their spirituality And you see a lot of these modalities becoming popular uh, when they've been here for centuries, uh, for for hundreds and thousands of years. But Reiki is one of them. Can you can you dig deeper into Reiki? And we know that you told us that, you know, crystal therapy is one of the one of the, um, you know, individual uh, modalities that's within Reiki. Can you start to can can you dig deeper into Reiki and, and, and let's have that conversation? Well, just kind of talking about the COVID-19 thing, mm-hmm. the pandemic. First and foremost, Mother Earth sat everybody down. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mother mm-hmm. Earth said, I'm tired of you abusing me. So mm-hmm. I'm going to sit your foot down, okay, mm-hmm. while I repair myself because you are not helping me right. repair. Yes. My God. That's, that's <laughs> the way I look at it. No, no, she's literally um, saying Mother Earth, not just a figurative <laughs> speech, Mother Earth's consciousness. She's literally talking about. Mother Earth yes. has a conscience. Okay. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Said, so, you guys are not helping me repair. So I'm going to sit y'all down yes. while I repair myself. Okay. And so what happened as we were sitting ourselves down and we didn't have all of these external distractions that we typically had access to, we had no choice but to start looking at ourselves and looking within, mm. which is why a lot of these alternative practices have all of a sudden became so popular yes. because most alternative practices are not dealing with external forces. They are dealing with being able to look within, heal yes. within, listen within all of these different things. Okay. Mm. So when we talk about Reiki, Reiki is again, an energy healing technique that you are using with your hands I often will say, you remember, you remember your grandmama or great grandmama, they would put, when you felt sick, they would put their hands on yeah. your forehead and put their hands on your stomach. Lay hands on you. <laughs> and you would feel better. There was something about that love coming from grandma or great grandma when you feeling bad and they put those hands on you, that love was felt through those hands. And I often will say that that's what Reiki is like because you are actually taking the love the connection with the divine and transmitting that to that person. Okay. Uh, We will typically 
do work with the chakras. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you guys have talked about chakras. We've talked about chakras, but we need a whole show on chakras, but not not in detail. detail. Yes. So that's, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. (laughs) Yeah. We, we focus on the seven major energy centers, which are the chakras, but also just even other areas of the body. Okay. Um, And try to make sure number one, that, those energy centers are functioning properly, okay, functioning mm-hmm. properly because those energy centers are related to your physical, mental, and emotional well-being, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, so we're making sure that they're functioning properly and also making sure that you don't have any other kind of ailments, uh, you know, aches and pains. And so you are using the, uh, the Reiki practices, Reiki mm-hmm. techniques in order to do that. Crystal therapy is used in conjunction with Reiki oftentimes by also using Mother Earth's uh, greatest gifts, right? Or we call them crystals, we call them rocks, whatever you want to call them. But each thing has its own vibratory frequency. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you'll use, we use crystals along with Reiki in order to provide that extra oomph, that extra power, that extra healing, that Mm -hmm. extra whatever you need along with the Reiki session. So Dr. Johnson, am I allowed to say that crystals are actually alive in, in, in the fifth, fifth, fifth and sixth dimension? Yeah. We look at them absolutely. as rocks here, but they are actually living consciousness. They're, they're they alive. Are. Yes. They are. And they hold frequency. They hold vi- certain vibrations, which is why it's also important to see where you're getting your crystals from. Yes. If you're getting your crystals from a place that where, again, uh, there were a lot of, uh, where there was a lot of violence, killing, yeah. murders, you probably don't want to get crystals from there mm-hmm. because oh. those crystals are holding that vibration. Yes. Oh, okay. wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, you need to be very mindful where you get your crystals from. If you need to be mindful of whether or not you're getting man-made crystals. Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. Versus oh. naturally, some naturally uh, something that's naturally occurring in Mother Earth. Mm. Okay. Yes. Um, but but they're, they're just used as another tool. They're just used as another tool. And when you use crystal therapy, you know, you're maybe uh, using those crystals because they all have different properties for maybe the different types of ailments that the client may have. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. That is correct. So, for instance, if a client is having difficulties with stability or security, that means she's having some he or she is having issues with their root chakra. Mm -hmm. Some uh, crystals that would be associated with that would be like tiger's eye or carnelian or something like that. That has some kind of grounding and stability type of properties in it. So, again, there's a whole science to it. Um, You know, so they're not just pretty things. They actually have a function. So you want to be able to do a little bit of research. Um, I like to wear crystals. I've got crystals on now. I've got tiger's eye on. I've got quartz, you know. Um, So it's just, again, they're not just something pretty to wear or pretty to look at. They actually have a function. They actually have a vibration that you want to tune into. Can can I share my favorite crystal with you? Absolutely. You're like 23. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I found out about your light 23 during the pandemic. I was reading a book called forbidden knowledge by Jason quit. And he uh, was a crystal dealer and he was uh, traveling to New Mexico to a show and they got him and his girlfriend got to the show and they were perusing down the aisles looking for crystals. And she walked by a crystal that spoke to her <laughs> and she's like, Whoa, what was that? And she went and got Jason and he came back and he looked at it and he said, we need to get that. What's the name of this crystal? And you can only get this crystal in Canada, in the mountains of Canada. So they were, they were driving the long, they were taking a long drive back. Um, and the, you know, Jason quit was, he was a hearer. He would, he, he could hear, he could see, he was a seer. Mm-hmm. The crystal, they were lost. The crystal spoke to him and gave him the right directions on how to get back get, get back on, on track. So your light twenty three is my favorite crystal. Wow. Well, I want to ask you a question. Mm-hmm. When we remove crystals from the cave, I was told by uh, an instructor that okay. that crystal loses a lot of its 
its its power and its and its zest because we removed it from its home, its family. It has consciousness. Absolutely. How do then? How when people they're selling these crystals in those stores? How do you recharge them? Are you able to get the the properties that they that they that they have for healing? Are you able to still use those? Because you know. Uh, the, the person was telling me that you know they they they're 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 afraid. It's just like you know the a baby calf. Uh, Chloe Moore's Tereska. Remember Chloe Moore's? She was channeling wow. with a baby calf, and her book is called The First One Hundred Days yeah. mm-hmm. and the yeah. Life of a Calf. And she basically told us on on our second show that they're scared, and yeah. you know they don't know what's going to happen. So these crystals have consciousness as well. And, I, and my, my thing is, if they're losing some of their strength and some of their properties uh, that are for healing, how do we how do we handle that? How do we, how do we get past that to, to, you know, effectively have them help humans? So one of the things you want to do is you want to put them back in their natural element. So a lot of times I will put my crystals in the ground. OK, I will literally put them in the earth. Or if I, I'll go to a large body of water and, and put them. So I'm near Galveston. I'm in Houston. So I'm near Galveston, about 45 minutes away. OK. And um, I will take my crystals and put them in the ocean and let them recharge that way. Uh, you can put them in sunlight. You can put them in moonlight. But you want to put them again with these natural occurring elements. They're not with their home, per se, but they can get some semblance of that recharge um, when you put them in their natural elements. Well, could you also communicate with them as well as assurance? Oh, you and talk to them. them yes. The way that if you can talk Absolutely. to them, you can give them that assurance and love. You can be their home. You can kind of give that comfort to them. Absolutely. That, well, you want to do no that. I have no idea, but I'm just assuming. <laughs> Yes, no, absolutely. You do. You actually want you actually want them to connect to you. So one thing that you do is, of course, you hold them, you speak to them, you speak your intentions into them. You can sleep with them under your pillow um, so that they are able to connect with you and your energy. Absolutely. It's almost like being abducted by a extraterrestrial Tereska and they take you to planet, you know, um, to to, to you know, wherever. And you're uh, you're well, scared out of your mind. So if they're talking to you, look, we're not going to hurt you. We're going to care. Well, for you. I, you see, I mean, it's the same I thing. At, I look at them. I look at them as me speaking to like, you know, speaking to the animals, or speaking to the tree, you know, holding the tree and talking to nature. I mean, I, I feel that's the same thing because every there's it has a consciousness and they're living things. So just like I talk to plants and, you know, you want to make them feel good because you want to exude love to all of God's living creatures. Period. Let's get, let's get so to the, uh, let's get, let's get to that's our, what I, so, that's what I see. Let's get to the, uh, the, the comments. Uh, Mrs. Clayton says, I felt my hands get hot many times when my spirit is full, stimulated or activated. This first happened to me when I was 12 or so. Is that healing energy from Reiki? It certainly can be if she wants to direct it that way. But what she's saying is that she's connected to the divine. Okay, and when we're connected to the divine, one of the most common ways of knowing that is you get hot. That happens to me, too. You get you get you get hot, and I'm not talking about hot flashes. Okay, no, I, I know, I know. I get but, that healing. I did that in my hands as well. Yeah, absolutely. But that is something that you can definitely use for Reiki. It's letting you know that you are connected completely to the to the divine at that particular time. Absolutely. You know, Doctor Johnson, when you're doing regular therapy for uh, for a patient who's you know maybe having some mental issues, um, you start off. I'm assuming, you know, just regular technique, you know, uh, uh, board certified things that, uh, you know, you've learned uh, being a doctor. And when mm-hmm. do you say, hmm, I need to go, I need to pull out my back, my back cape and put my mask on <laughs> and go spiritual. How, how does that work? <laughs> so, you know, with every patient, I meet them where they are. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, if they, uh, give me any inkling that they're needing something a little more, which it usually comes out with some type of phrase that, that kind of clues me into the, that they're needing a little more, mm-hmm. then that's when I come out gotcha. with the back cape. With the cape. Um, and yeah. But <laughs> honestly, the type of people that are, that are coming to me now, they're already seeking that. Yeah. 
They're yes. saying, I mean, when they're calling me on the phone, they're like, I need something else. I've been to therapy before. Yes. I need something else. Okay. Yes. And That's amazing. I, you know, and uh, it's, you're the person I've been looking for because you're, you're advertising that you do all of this. I've yes. done the regular stuff before. I need something else. So that yes. is what I've had come to me probably for the past three years now. So I'm starting out the gate with the, the spiritual stuff, really. Because <laughs> that's who's coming. That's who's coming. That's what they need. Yeah. The asking is there because people mm-hmm. are not necessarily trusting what the world's way, the world's way anymore. You right. Know? Exactly. They're, they're well, seeking more of the. Right. We're going to reset. Uh, you're, if you're just logged in, you're listening to I'm Woke. I am Jason Medlock, and this is Tereska Harrison. We have the wonderful, wonderful Dr. Keisha Johnson, and her website is www.jacobsladderpsych.com. And Dr. Johnson has been speaking about an array of topics. Uh, we were just talking about uh, Reiki healing. We spent some time uh, speaking about the Akasic Records. Uh, obviously, uh, that helps um, you understand your past and understand how to shape your future. And, and, and Dr. Johnson is also a mental health therapist. Uh, so Do- Dr. Johnson, um, uh, you, you were speaking about grounding and in some of these terms, uh, I've been, I'm, I'm writing them down. I'm like, let me kind of go back to them so they can really get the full understanding because there are a lot of pieces that actually go with a lot of different techniques that you use in, in grounding love high vibration is mixed in all of them, but in particular, mm-hmm. let's, let's dig into grounding just for one second, yes. not too long, but let the audience know what you mean by that. So um, grounding is actually a very common term in, in the psychology world because it's something that is used for people who suffer from anxiety. Okay. And all grounding really means is being centered, yes. being centered and calm. And there are a lot of different um, ways to go about doing that. Um, but one common thread is to make sure that your at least your hands are touching the ground, yes. touching the earth, touching a tree, okay? Yes. Or sitting down in the grass, mm-hmm. on the ground, have your back up against a tree. Okay. And the reason I keep mentioning the ground, which is why we call it grounding is because you have so many uh, chakras or energy centers all throughout the body, but the majority of them are in your hands and feet. Hmm. And so when you are actually putting your hands on the ground or your hands on a tree, you are actually allowing that nervous energy to exit your body and go into the earth go into a tree which is rooted in the earth, okay? So it's actually taking that energy out of you and then replacing it with good positive energy, which automatically calms you down, okay? Not only are we talking about the, the, the energy centers and that, and, that, uh, and that leaving your body, also the breath is important, okay? Mm. So breathing is also something that's very important yeah. with grounding. Hey. And just talking about breathing, breathing is life. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Because I was going to say, get into that. <laughs> okay. And so when you are able to slow your breathing down, which is what we teach them in grounding, you are actually letting out that negative energy, that nervous energy, okay, in your body, you're breathing it out. And then when you're breathing in, you're taking in that nice, good, positive energy from your environment, from the earth. Okay, so that's why we typically say go outside, go outside and and do those particular types of techniques, because we're talking about a reciprocal relationship. Okay, you give it out. You take I need you to take this out of me. I'm not centered. Take this out of me and then replace it with something more positive to calm me down. And to be able to relax. Now I and know that I've been doing that for the last two weeks, and it's really helped me a whole lot. I've never gone outside and do, you know, I like, like I said, I like nature and everything, but to go out there and really have an intention, and uh, it changed the way. I mean, it changed me. I, I felt the difference, and all. Now I don't <laughs> know. Amazing. You mentioned you were attracted to a particular tree. There we go. Because I was, I was, I was, I was gonna, gonna, there I was we go. Go back to that. So. <laughs> so 
you know, you yeah. said, well, maybe I was giving it some healing energy. Actually, the tree yeah. was giving you Me healing energy. <laughs> healing yeah. energy. You yeah. were attracted to a particular tree because that tree called you over to totally. it and said, I've got what you need. So yeah. that's why you went and you put your hands on it. On that tree. Your, and it's on the same that tree. Particular tree. Okay. So <laughs> yes. the tree was giving awesome. you what you needed. That's why you awesome. were attracted to it. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so yes. we're gonna spend a little bit of time. It's so much to talk about, and I know we're you know we're, we're not gonna be here all night. But the breath, see, yes. they, the the breath. breath Doc, is it okay to say that uh, there are certain breath techniques, and one I have been practicing is Kalapate breath, that mm-hmm. can move you into another dimension, and the. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Okay, so the right breath technique mixed in with the meditation can take you somewhere, people. That you you be like, oh my god, where am I? But the breath is very important uh, when it's time to ground, and also helping you get to the stage or the place you need to be while you're meditating. So I just wanted to highlight that too. Absolutely, Uh, yes. So the breath and meditation can take you places that that drugs and alcohol cannot. Don't need to take. Okay, you don't you don't need to do that in order to go there. Okay, all you need to do is breathe and be still for a little bit, and you can go there. (laughs) (laughs) Miss Clayton has another. uh, uh, I mean, she's active. I like it when. Hey, audience, go ahead and send your questions. uh, You know, because we're going to wrap it up in a minute and and get these uh, questions out to Doctor Johnson. She's been great, but. Miss Clayton, it says, okay, thank you. But it first happened at church. Um, She said it first happened at church. I've been moved to lay hands on others for healing prayers and literally felt energy flow through me. I know God was showing me a glimpse of my purpose. Absolutely. I don't think it was a glimpse. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh-uh. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. God is definitely showing her what, what direction she needs to go into. <laughs> Dr. Johnson, looks like you have some fans. Uh, truly amazing. This episode needs to be part two. Tell it, tell Latasha. She needs to come back because there's a lot to talk about. Absolutely. I would love to come back. I would love to come back. Uh, so, Tereska, what go ahead, Tereska. I know you, you know, you, you want, you well, want. Be, it was funny. You were talking about brother. I was telling people, don't try that what you just did at home where you would pass out. Probably. <laughs> yes, you, you, you can. Take, I can, I can see it since that to pass it out. Doing those short breaths like that. So definitely don't try it at home. Y'all get some, some, some study on that. Well, the breathing take. Well, my first, but I've learned that breathing has given me life. Yes. I was anxious and had all that, uh, tension built up, but, and I'm one that won't breathe. I have to, I have my watch to tell me to breathe. I have to, so I have to release and let go. So I've been going through a lot of, you know, releasing and all that kind of stuff, just trying to get in place of, uh, of peace and, and just relaxation. So, Great. and, but the breathing is very, very, very important. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Dr. Absolutely. Johnson, can you, can you, can you leave us, uh, our audience with, with just some words of wisdom. I mean, we I, this this went by so fast. <laughs> but can you leave us yeah, yeah. our audience with a word words of wisdom? And I promise, audience, I'm gonna get J- Dr. Johnson back because she has some more to say and she knows it. She knows it. Did you put it? Did you put the website up? Everything website is up. Yes, right there is uh, yeah. www.jacobsladderpsych.com and people please reach out to Dr. Johnson. And, and sometimes, you know, African-Americans, we don't really want to admit that something may be wrong. Somebody's talking to me or what's going on with me. I'm, I'm not feeling myself. Call Dr. Johnson and, and have a Absolutely. conversation. It's always okay to talk to someone else outside of your circle. Absolutely. I'm trying to think words of wisdom. The best words of wisdom I can give people is to be true to themselves. Yes. Be true to themselves. So be authentic. When you are authentic, you are allowing yourself to get in alignment with your destiny and your purpose. But when you're authentic, know that there's going to be some changes. There's going to be some transitions if you haven't been able to do that up until this point. But just when you're authentic, you are flowing with spirit. You are connecting with the divine. You are true to yourself. That is the connection to the divine. And that's all you have to be concerned about. Mm. The rest is up to you. (laughs) 
Okay, and That's Dr. Beautiful. we really appreciate it. I'm going to tell you guys, it, Dr. Johnson had me on the waiting list. We had to wait almost a month to get on this show. So if you want to get with <laughs> Dr. Right. Johnson, you better call her. You better get on her website, <laughs> <laughs> and you need to get in line. But she is absolutely uh, amazing. Awesome. And I will, I'm will. i going to be calling you because I want to, uh, and I don't know if you have the course, but I want to learn a uh, the ways of the acoustic record uh, from you. I've just had a wonderful conversation with you, and I'm, 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 I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it right now, Teresa. Awesome, yeah. awesome. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> okay, Doctor Johnson. Thank you so much. We're gonna go ahead and uh, finish you. the show up, but um, we appreciate you. We Thankful really appreciate you. you. Thank, appreciate you. All right. Take care. You all have a great night. You too. Thank you so much. You too. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 You unpack this. Unpack it. Oh, I love that. I mean, I just love the way. I mean, the in the basics of it all. Of it all. Okay. Because you have to be able to go to her and in order to be able to move toward holistic healing, uh, crystal healing, uh, or, or dive delve into uh, Reiki master or being natural health, uh, rejuvenation, all that. In order to do that, you have to be true to yourself and just gotta know, open up, and know that is there's something more that you need. True to yourself to is, ex- in everything to, to grow, to grow everything we've mm-hmm. talked about, everything that we've given to the audience up until now has been about being true to yourself, which translates into love in your heart. It translates mm-hmm. into um, having that light moving light into your heart, into your body. And from right. there, you know, understanding how to meditate. And I say this over and over, right. how to be still. And let yourself feel yeah. a big part of understanding the Akashic records is feel. And you have yeah. to believe in none of this. None of these spiritual modalities will work if the belief system is not there. And right. I just, and it's, and it's yeah. not being, it's not being afraid and they're not being afraid to move into the spirit realm, you know, not being afraid of that. You know, exactly. we're, we're, we're used to being, preach to talk to you know sitting there so somebody you know give us filling us information with what the word of god or whatever it is right. but we never really sit down and that's what the pandemic did jason we never really sat down and saw what was within us well that's what and mother so, earth did you, if you, if you, yeah, if you yeah. paid attention with dr johnson said we you know had that exactly and but mother earth is like you know I, I, we may have brushed over it but mother earth she's just not saying a term She's she's right. speaking of Mother Earth consciousness. I mean, there are right. channelers channelers out there that connect to the conscience of the Earth. The Earth is living. The Earth is a living body. Yeah, well, and I, it, and I know right. it's hard to wrap your head around that, but you can actually channel the conscience of the Earth. And she's a very 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 highly intelligent being uh, that really really uh, you know wants this planet to be. Uh, what she envisioned it to be, uh, what she envisioned it to be. Uh, D says, where do you find different breathing techniques? Uh, you can actually go on YouTube and just keyword search breathing technique. The Kalapate breath, I learned from an instructor on a app called Gaia. Gaia is an app, G-A-I-A. Uh, and you go on that app and you can, there are dozens uh, of uh, meditation instructors and one in particular, and I don't want to butcher his name, but he was teaching the Kalapate breath and the breath technique alone in meditation and or in any type of uh, spiritual uh, technique, which like you say, the Akashic records, Akashic records takes you, takes your mind into a different way and in a, diff- a different realm. So it's very, very important. Tosca, do you want to leave the audience with a few words I, before I close this thing well, out? I- I think it is one. It was wonderful that Dr. Johnson was able to give us both to us mm-hmm. both worlds. You know, she's educated from the uh, this psychology aspect of the world. You know, and then she was able to merge that, and she is able to merge that with the spiritual part of the world. And that's what we're basically here to do: be able to live in both worlds. You know, yes. and how and how you can she can help you move us you, you forward to grow. That's what it's all about. We're mm. here to move to for abundance, yes. positive abundance, not just abundance, but positive abundance. You so. know what I wanted to ask Dr. Johnson was crystal therapy, but then yeah. we have yeah. microscopic crystals in our brains. 
But you mm-hmm. heard her talk about crystals hold their vibration. But then yeah. if they're in our brains as well, crystals are in, microscopically in our brains. What sort of frequency? Why, why do we have them there? And crystals are also in radios. That's how radios tune frequencies with the aid of crystals. But we have that in our brains. Hmm. People right. need to wake up and people are woke. So, Trust, I'm going to go ahead and move you out and we'll, we'll, we'll pick okay. back up in the back room. We're very, 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 very excited about what happened here tonight. And I'm going to read from Ms. Clayton. This episode was so wonderfully dense. Be still. Breathe. Acoustic Records, Reiki Healing, Crystal Healing, and Living in Our Authentic Selves. Uh, stay connected to the divine. Thank you so much. And you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome, Miss Clayton. And I want to um, challenge you guys. Um, go to jasonmedlock.com. Um, uh, go, to the, go to our YouTube channel. channel I'm Woke. Subscribe. Uh, we have a Facebook page. I'm Woke. Subscribe. We're going to be bringing you different types of modalities. We're going to be talking about different types of spirituality um, uh, or spiritual gifts uh, that, you know, that we all have. There's nothing special about um, Dr. Johnson. She worked hard at her gifts. There's nothing special about myself, nothing special about Tereska or any of the contributors that come on the show. We are, uh, you know, all of us are divine and we work hard at our, at our gifts and we, we practice and that's what you can do too. practice meditation, practice calming yourself, uh, getting into that uh, place. Think about starting at the top of your head, moving down slowly. Maybe it's an elevator. Maybe it's a slide. Maybe it's a staircase. Walk down that staircase. Get on that elevator within yourself and move down to your heart space. Open the door and sit inside of your heart space. Once you visualize that, now you're in a a place where you can connect, where you can find out how to move your life forward, which direction you want to move in and how you want to move in. And it's just so amazing. And there's just so many different ways to um, figure out, um, you know, what your purpose is. But I want to, you know, Thank you guys for being with us tonight. Um, and this has been fabulous. We'll be back next Tuesday. We, uh, our guest next Tuesday will be fabulous as well. But, um, you know, we, we love you guys. Uh, thank you for supporting us. And um, I just want to say good night. And uh, we will be back. We will be back. And this is a great show. This is an absolutely great show. So we're going to go ahead and close it out. And, again, thank you. Uh, and you've been listening to I'm Woke. I'm Jason Medlock. And to get more information about us, uh, join our YouTube page, join our Facebook page, uh, and www.jasonmedlock.com. We will see you next week. <laughs>